I'm going to be working on portraying the eyes and the particular anatomy that goes around that area of the face. I've always really loved working and sketching on this type of area. There's so many little muscles and so many things that take place within the face that uh, there's so much depth there. There's so many little details that can be kind of forgotten. And I like doing these like close up kind of uh, detailed shots of the face and adding the nose as well seems to kind of give it a sense of structure, even while this part of the face is kind of floating and floating in air is when I do these kind of sketches. Here I'm just kind of blocking in where shadows are going, even with my kind of very loose style in the way that I draw. I still approach the drawing in a more traditional way. I'm thinking about the foundation of shadows and values and, and the shapes that are going into making up this part of the face. So you can see the kind of contour lines around the eyes. Those are kind of signifying where shadows will be. And then I'm starting with larger shapes, larger blocked in areas. And I'm using, I'm looking for darkest values, which kind of just, there aren't a lot of, there's a lot of kind of mid-tone shadows in this particular, uh, in the particular reference I was using. So there isn't going to be, I didn't use a ton of really dark, dark shadows, but we're definitely building up to those kind of thicker and darker lines that have already been laid down with gradients, which will come in later on. I think the eyes definitely allow for a lot of, a lot of playroom because there's so many little kind of muscles surrounding the eye and there's all these little folds and you can create a lot, a lot of interest in eyes like this without, without feeling like you're, you know, without making it look like the eyes are wrinkled or there's too many layers of skin or something. So things are really abstract here, but the eye itself in that kind of, that kind of eye socket that it rests in gives, gives it the structure. It gives it like a little foundation. There's a lot of playroom in, in these shapes and I'm kind of using that to my advantage. The end result will be kind of this kind of floating you know, piece of the face, this floating eye. I kind of think of it as like a structure um, or a, almost like, like a practice sketch that you'd see in like a drawing fundamentals um, book or something like that. I, I like even taking, even taking those studies and, and trying to apply my style to them and, and study them in the way that I would naturally draw them. I'm starting to use some cross hatching here to develop the kind of mid tones and the values that rest in the shadow areas and these dark, these darker values will create a sense of depth that way. And I think it's important to kind of bring in your own, you know, to have your own kind of line work that you can create those values with. And then, you know, try layering those types of lines that you're comfortable, you know, creating values with. And don't be afraid to kind of branch out and use some kind of more sporadic lines and, and keep things loose and sketchy. I decided to, to really utilize a lot of cross hatching in this piece. I thought it would add interesting, an interesting sense of depth and I've always loved those kind of old black and white uh, kind of ink drawings that you know the masters did or these old like uh, block print types of uh, illustrations that came from from the past and I, I you know portraying um, classical events or landscapes or any of those things that they looked like they just took years and years to produce because of it, the amount of texture that was built up through little cross hatching and line work and I've always I've loved those types of works and pieces so I think I try to utilize that style and way of drawing but bring it into like a modern context. Those rhythmic repeating patterns and lines mixed with the kind of loose and sketchy line work around that, and then the harsher kind of thicker lines, I think is the perfect mix of kind of traditional and modern look. I love the way that kind of appears and looks and tapering off some of the thicker lines into thinner ones and utilizing some kind of heavier shadows, especially around the kind of top eyelid, but then allowing that to branch off. 
Uh, even a single line can have a pretty powerful effect on a face. That's kind of interesting, but it's also it can be a little bit scary because you are trying to be free flowing. You're not really I don't you don't want to think about every single line. And then here I'm utilizing some letter set lettering that I have. These sheets that are from I believe like the 80s or something. You can rub on the lettering. And they used to use it for graphic design and kind of lay out before they were using a lot of like computer programs and everything. I have a big stack of them and I like kind of bringing these kind of little random letters into my work because they, they kind of add another layer of texture and I'm just adding kind of finishing touches here. I don't want to, you know, I almost felt like I sort of went overboard on the, <laughs> on the details around the eye, but in the end, I think it came together and I, I like how this one turned out. Thanks so much for watching.